All right, let's talk about a slightly more difficult version of sequencing that is potentially much, much more rewarding. So we're gonna use the program Eonix, which you can find online for free. Uh, it is this guy right here. And it's uh, created by uh, partial funding from the government of France. And it's based on the ideas of the composer, computer scientist, mathematician, and architect, Yanis Xenakis. So this allows you to create a graphical sequence uh, where you define and trace paths that they call curves in three-dimensional space with cursors that output their X, Y, and Z coordinate positions on the curve. Triggers that are triggered when a curve passes through it and the ability to loop cursors in a number of ways. And all of this is sent out over OSC and can be configured in a number of ways from the score file that you create in Eonix. So here's how to use it. Uh, in Eonix, I'm going to go to config and network. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have everything set up uh, in there to enable OSC, that's important. And that my default IP is set to 127.0.0.1 and the port is set to 57120 for the default IP alias out. That's the default and it should be like that, but just double check. Uh, next, I'm gonna make this uh, full screen so we can really see it. And this is just a Cartesian plane. This center slightly grayer line is zero, zero. Um, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna move it with my cursor so that that is at the bottom left of my screen, but it really doesn't matter. All of this is relative based on the position you start at and it can get really changed up. Uh, next, I'm gonna come up here to snap mouse action on vertical grid and horizontal. And that's just gonna make everything snap to the grid nice and easy. I can zoom in or out. Um, I don't have to be at this level. It's really pretty arbitrary. Um, I'm gonna draw some curves and then I'm gonna use the curve to send OSC data into Max. So there's a couple different curves I can use. I could use a circular curve with a cursor. I could do a smooth curve with a cursor I could do a straight curve with a cursor, or I could do a math curve with a cursor. Uh, over here in the teal, I can do all of those curves except for the circle uh, without a cursor. And then I've got a cursor that I can add to a selected curve. Since I need both a cursor and a curve, I'm just gonna grab the smooth with cursor. I'm gonna position it starting at zero, zero. And we're just gonna draw some stuff randomly. You'll notice that it looks like these are doubling back. Um, in fact, they are. And you know what? That's totally cool in Eonix because all of this is going to be data that we send via OSC and it's relative position. So it doesn't have to be perfectly linear. In fact, I can get really, really funky and come all the way back to not zero because I don't want to end up uh, accidentally closing my curve, but you know, somewhere else. And we'll end my curve like, how about right like that. I'm gonna hit escape. And now my curve is black and it's uh, gotten rid of the lines that were on snap. But you can see I've got this little cursor here at the bottom. Yay. If I hit play, the cursor moves. Now, also down here, I've got the uh, time codes that show it's four seconds in. I have a speed uh, slider right here. If I go to the right above one, then it's gonna go faster than real time. And if I go to the left below one, it will go slower than real time. Now, if I click on the curve, I can edit the points on the curve. I can uh, maybe adjust, say, where those are, make them smaller or larger as I so desire. 
And if I click on the cursor, this is where I get the fun stuff. If I mouse over the cursor and just hold it there, it gives me a lot of information. It says OSC is going to be IP out, port out. Then it tells me it's going to be cursor, cursor ID, cursor group ID, cursor value X, value Y, value Z, position X, position Y, position Z. Um, that's a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of things that you don't necessarily need to know what it is. Uh, so I'm going to click on just the cursor, just that guy that's moving on the curve. I'm going to go to infos. And right here is what I need. I need to know the ID of that cursor because that's going to be used for routing it in OSC. So we've got cursor is 2. If I click on that, I can change it. I can also go to time, and this is pretty important. Um, under time, I can change the cursor loop pattern, which is currently set here to 1, 0, which just means play forward once. If I click on this uh, arrow, I'm just going to set to uh, 1 and minus 1, which is loop round trip on curve. So it's going to go all the way to the end and then come all the way back. That's it. If I click on messages, I can edit the messages that are coming out here. And all of this is stuff that I can uh, view in Max. And in fact, we're going to very, very shortly. Uh, but it's telling me that value 1 is the cursor ID. The cursor group ID is 2. X, Y, and Z are 3, 4, and 5. And I really don't care about the rest. So I'm just going to close that and hit cancel. Uh, now I'm going to return to normal size. And in Max, I'm going to open up a little demo patch that I've created called Eonix Explanation. And I'm just taking UDP receive on port 57120, which is the default from Eonix, running that through an OSC route for cursor and trigger. Uh, routing it, I only want the cursor ID, the X position, and the Y position. So if I go back to Eonix and I hit play, cursor ID is two and it's giving me the X position and the Y position. And all of this is scaled between zero and one. So that's why when I said it doesn't matter if you start at zero, zero, it doesn't matter if you start at zero and zero. Uh, it's all based on where the actual curve starts and where it ends. That defines the zero and one, the widest points of it. So here is the widest point that's going to be positive one. Here is the uh, point furthest to the left. That's going to be zero. Here is the bottom. That's going to be zero right there. And then here's the top point. That's going to be positive one. So that is really, really, really useful. Um, what we're going to do with this, though, is we're going to play around with these curves. And we're going to use that to create sequences. Um, I can stop in Eonix and I can hit return. Uh, and I'm just going to close this. I don't really care because I've already created a score in Eonix that we're going to use. And this is a slightly more complicated example. So now let's take a look at what we can do with that in Max now that we know how to get data in from Eonix.